Hi, today we're going to take a look at the Samyang AF 35mm f1.8 lens and compare it to the Sony 35mm f1.8 full frame lens. So let's see how they compare. A few weeks ago, we got the Samyang AF 35mm f1.8 lens for review. This lens is the most recent one in Samyang's growing family of autofocus lenses called Tiny. This will be our third lens from this family that we have tested here, starting from the AF 45mm f1.8 FE lens in 2019, and then the AF 75mm f1.8 lens earlier in 2020. Both performed quite well in our testing. As we typically do, we shall start with the design and build before we move over to performance and give you our final verdict. The lens has 10 elements in 8 groups with quite a number of advanced elements for its size including 2 HR high reflective index elements and 2 spherical elements. The lens is made of hard plastic material with its internals made out of metal and glass of course, exactly like the rest of the family of these lenses. Unlike other lenses in this series, it comes in a nice semi-hard case which is a nice touch and we wish all Samyang lenses from now on would come with such a case. As with all of the lenses in this line, the 35mm f1.8 is lightweight and compact, measuring about 7cm or 2.5 inches tall and weighing in at just under 245 grams, including the hood and caps, which is super lightweight. The lens has a single multi-purpose ring with no hard stops. It has a decent resistance and is not too narrow, exactly like the AF 75mm f1.8 E lens that we tested. This lens has a custom switch that features two modes. Mode 1 is the common manual focusing or manual override of focusing and mode 2 will give smooth aperture control without click steps. A little bit confusing at first, but it seems to work fine. We would love it if it came with a 3 mode switch with autofocus manual focus as well, but this is what we currently have. Unlike the 75mm f1.8 lens, the new 35mm f1.8 does have a weather ceiling, which is a welcome addition. The lens comes only in Sony E-mount and we tested it on our A7R Mark IV and our A6500. The lens comes with a nice and fairly deep plastic hood. It has 9 aperture blades with a fairly small front element compared to its size. Finally, the lens has a 58mm filter thread. Now let's move over to performance and we'll start as always with autofocus. Just like the 75mm f1.8 lens, both stills and video autofocus on the Samyang 35mm f1.8 lens is courtesy of the linear stepping motor system. Based on our testing, both the stills and video autofocus seems fast and responsive on our A7R Mark IV and it even seems to work well in low light. As a native lens, the Sony 35mm f1.8 performs flawlessly, although surprisingly it was a little jumpy in very low lighting conditions. When it comes to sharpness, we tested both the Samyang and the Sony using our special large professional Imatest high-end chart. In the center of the frame, wide open, sharpness seems to be very good on the Samyang. The corners show some softness which improves at f2.8 and gets to be very good at f5.6. Compared to the Sony 35mm f1.8, the Samyang is a little sharper wide open in the center, but the corners are significantly sharper than the Sony even at f5.6, which was a big surprise to us. Just for fun, we also tested our old Sony 35mm f1.8 APS-C lens on our Sony A6500. The difference in resolution and general image quality compared to the full-frame lenses on the high megapixel A7R Mark IV is just huge. The official close-up distance of the Samyang is 29cm from the sensor plane, which is about what we got in our testing. The Sony was able to focus significantly closer from around 23 centimeters or so. As for the image quality close up, wide open, interestingly, the Sony looks quite a bit better and even when closed down to f2.8, the Sony has an edge, but the Samyang does improve considerably. 
Maybe the one aspect where the Sony lens is significantly better than the Samyang and actually significantly better than almost all other still lenses that we have tested is focus breathing. We're not sure what Sony did with this lens, but it practically has zero breathing, which is remarkable for such an inexpensive lens. The Samyang does pretty good compared to other lenses in this test, but the Sony is really in a class of its own in this case. Wide open, the Sony also performs better when it comes to chromatic aberrations with no CA visible. The Samyang does display some CA wide open which disappears when closing down to f2.8. When we tested the Samyang, flare is certainly visible when facing direct light, use the hood when you can. Compared to the Sony 35mm f1.8, the amount of flare seems to be pretty similar. There is certainly some darkening of the corners wide open in the Samyang, but it clears up nicely at f2.8 and beyond. The Samyang actually might perform a little bit better than the Sony does in this respect. As for barrel and pincushion distortion, Based on our testing, it doesn't seem like any of the two lenses exhibit visible barrel or pincushion distortion. As we typically do, we conclude with a look at the bokeh, and the bokeh of the Samyang lens looks very similar to that of the Sony 35mm, although upon closer inspection, our Sony 35mm lens bokeh balls do look somewhat cleaner, but to be honest, this is really nitpicking. So let's conclude. The Samyang AF 35mm f1.8 is another great offer from the company's tiny line of autofocus lenses. Like the two other lenses from this line that we have tested, it is small and light, has good autofocus, especially in stills mode, and very good sharpness in the center wide open, and if you close down to f2.8, this will extend to the corners as well. Compared to the highly acclaimed Sony 35mm f1.8, the Samyang does offer smaller, lighter body and based on our testing, which was rather surprising, better image quality across the frame and particularly in the corners even when closed down significantly. This doesn't mean that the Sony lens doesn't have its place. With superior build quality, better chromatic operation wide open, unbeatable autofocus performance in video, zero breathing and better close-up capabilities, it is a very solid choice as long as you can forgive some corner softness. At the end of the day, if you're in the market for a quality, inexpensive, fast, sharp, and compact 35mm full-frame lens for Sony E-mount, look no further than the Samyang AF 35mm f1.8, which currently sells for just under $400. If you're looking for a better build quality with more emphasis on video, you might want to choose the Sony 35mm f1.8 for just under $700. So that was our look at the 35mm f1.8 lens by Samyang compared to the Sony. You can check out the full review with all of our test results on lensvid.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more videos just like this. See you next time.